We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires.
Thank you, Bill. It's beautiful as always. Appreciate you so much. Well, good morning, everybody out there in TV land. It's good to see you all. You know, last week I, I welcomed you to the first ever worship service that was live streaming at our fellowship. Well, this morning, I welcome you to our very first Zoom gathering of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada, where it is our mission to grow together in love, faith, justice, and joy. So my name is Dave Bianchi, and I serve as your worship associate today. Now, because of the concern for our members and visitors, we've made this difficult decision to ask everyone to stay home and view us on your personal devices. Yet know that we're, we will still welcome all to be part of us, regardless of racial identity, age, economic circumstances, immigration status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Now, if you're someone who's viewing this and it's your first exposure to us, feel free to contact our office or our website for more information. You can sign up for our newsletter that keeps you informed of all the activities here at UUFNN. And I thank you for tuning in. And now, Reverend Karen has a few comments. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here this morning to see everyone who's here. And I would like to uh, give you just a couple of tips in case you're new to Zoom as we spend this time together this morning. We're gonna invite you to leave your microphone muted so that we can spend this time together and minimize the background noise. And we also, um, I'm gonna invite you, there should be near the top of the screen, perhaps the top right, a toggle that's called speaker view and gallery view. If you click the speaker view, you should just have the presenters on your screen when they are presenting. But I know that we also wanna see everyone who's here, so you can play with that also, but I wanted to give you those options. And then somewhere on the bottom of your screen, you should find something that says chat box. If you take, if you click on chat box, that should open. And then down at the bottom, there's a place that says type your mes message here. We're gonna invite you to make comments as you like throughout the service. And then toward the end of our service, we'll have a few moments of prayer and meditation and you'll be able to type your joys and concerns in that box for everyone to see. So I wanted to just call your attention to those um, Zoom tips. We're in a situation where we are all learning new things together. Things may not always be perfect, but they will be real and genuine, and how wonderful it is that we can all be connected in this way together. Welcome to our worship. We're so glad you're here. Please, so long as you're willing or able, we will sing Comfort Me, Pray With Me, and Sing With Me. 
Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Pray with me, pray with me, pray with me, oh my soul. Pray with me, pray with me, pray with me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. We open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to being connected wherever we are and learning to connect in new ways. So get comfortable, take a few deep breaths and settle in for a short while. We'll light our chalices at this time and everyone is invited to light your own chalice. If you made one this week for this purpose or if you have one nearby that you can light, we're gonna invite everyone to take a moment and hold up our chalices so that we can all see our various chalices and our way of being connected in our various places. And we're invited to all light them together at this time. Our chalice lighting words for this morning. Through the mystery of time and space and the connection of community, may the light and warmth of our chalices reach us all wherever we are and remind us that we are each loved and that we are indeed all connected. I'd like to share a personal family story that involves a longtime Unitarian Universalist who now lives in Texas, but has a family member who's an active member of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada. And all the interconnections involving his family and ours, it also involves the current 
coronavirus pandemic. It was in the late 90s that a young college student showed up at our fellowship having rejected other religions. His mom, Aaron, who was living in Hawthorne at the time, suggested that, that he take a look at the Unitarian Universalist since she knew about the UUs through a world religion class she had taken in college. Our young man, Ryan, was immediately taken to us and us to him. He became a very active member. And when his parents moved to Reno, he got them involved too. And that brought us our building guru, Dennis Connolly. Our oldest daughter, Leah, also became a close friend with Ryan's sister, Megan. Now, Leah's oldest son left Reno last summer to spend a year in Germany as a Rotary Youth Exchange student. He was one, having a wonderful, wonderful experience. But then the COVID-19, better known as coronavirus, hit. For a while, it looked like he might be able to stay and enjoy a tour of all of Europe, but that was eventually canceled. As his parents became more concerned, they started to look for ways to bring him home. And most flights from Europe had been canceled or forbidden. Ryan Conley, who now works for American Airlines in Dallas, Texas, they were able to contact him and he spent two days, including one whole hour where he stayed on the phone with the worried parents solving their problem. And as we speak, our grandson is now home safe and sound and, and watching this as we speak today. The intersection of families and the UU connections proved to be very valuable. You know, in these times of danger and stress, it's, it's important to not only reach out to one another, but also not be afraid to ask for help. That's why we call it a fellowship. You know, this is the time of our service when we have the opportunity to share our bounty with each other. Since we are not physically together to pass the basket, we can do so virtually by texting the number 73256, 73256, putting UUFNN in the message box and then to hit send. Now, I tried to do this yesterday and I struggled, but I finally called out for help as I mentioned before. <laughs> and this is how you do it. So you just go on, put those numbers in, uh, put UUFNN in the message box and it should pop up and you can follow then the directions that are provided. And don't forget that we have our share of the plate partners. You know, in this month, it's the Reno Initiative for Shelter and Equity Arise. These folks are doing amazing work helping our neighbors without homes. So when you text, you can designate UUFNN or RISE or check in twice to give to both. So you can also mail a check the old fashioned way, write out a check, send it to the office at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno 89511. And let the collection begin. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you again, Bill. I'd like you to join me this morning as we bless these offerings to the work of this, this fellowship, fellowship, which is helping more people, people grow in love, faith, faith justice, justice, and joy. We, we dedicate, dedicate ourselves, ourselves and these are offerings. <laughs> In the time of pandemic, and the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced some met their shadows and the people began to think differently and the people healed and in the absence of people living in ignorant dangerous mindless and heartless ways the earth began to heal and when the danger passed and the people joined together again they grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. Please sing along. You know the words. This is an old chestnut for us. Well, I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love when I breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love when I breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe. I'd like to share just a few thoughts from my heart to yours this morning. We're in such a time of learning and discovery and new ways and adjusting to the new, not normal. I'm gonna insist on calling it the not normal. What I am finding is that when despair begins to take hold and fear is present, 
when our building here at UUFNN is just a little too quiet or a little too lonely, I set my sights on what is down the road. And one of the things that I love to think about is what a grand celebration we will have here on a Sunday morning when we are all able to come back together. I imagine the hugs and the noise level and the greeting time during our worship, which will take a long time. And I imagine that celebration and it lifts my spirits and it reminds me that this too will pass at some point. Wally sent me a quote this week that maybe you've seen that says, our grandparents were asked to go to war. We're being asked to sit on the couch. We can do this. That's not exactly the whole picture, but nonetheless, levity is also important right now. You know, it's a bit of a fascinating lesson that I have learned through the years, and I think a great metaphor for our time right now, and that is that whether I am biking or kayaking or snowboarding or cross-country skiing or just about anything else, wherever my eyes go, so I will go. Zachary, our son, has been learning to drive these last months, and he has learned that wherever his eyes go, that's where the car is going to go. It is so true of us right now in this time, is it not? Wherever our eyes go, that's where we'll go. Wherever we set our sights, that's where our lives are going to go. The choices that we make in how we choose to spend our time and our energy during this time is where our lives will go. And that is where we will go. I don't know about you, but I want to emerge from this time a better person. I want to be stronger and spiritually grounded and kinder and more fit than I've ever been in my life. And I want our spiritual community to be more connected and deeper and stronger than we have ever been. So to do that, we have to make the choices day by day as we're adjusting to the new not normal that will lead us where we want to go. This is a time to do those things that we've all heard ourselves say, I would do that if I had time. Now many of us have the time. What we nurture in this time is who we will become. What we nurture in this time is who we will become. The saying that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, well, a much truer statement is the grass is greener where we water it. Perhaps this is a time to be intentional about where we're doing our watering. I want to share this reading that perhaps you have seen on the internet this week by Richard Hendricks, Irish poet and Catholic priest. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. 
all over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, but to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now. Today, breathe. Listen behind the factory noises of your panic. The birds are singing again. The sky is clear, clearing, spring is coming, and we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. What we nurture during this time is who we will become in our home lives, our individual lives, and in our community. You are already calling each other and finding ways to connect and look out for each other. And I'm so proud of that. Keep that up. The Junto group has just stepped up to offer us um, running errands for folks and picking up groceries to those who don't want to get out. And they're also offering to provide tech tutoring. And so I'm going to challenge us during this time, I'm going to offer a couple of challenges to the community. I'm going to challenge you to learn Spanish so that when we come back together for our immigration work, we'll be ready. And perhaps we're all in classes at the UUFNN, virtually, of course. I'm going to challenge you to share the link to our services to people you know and expand our reach during this time. Let's find some ways to grow and also find some ways to have fun and hold this time precious in our hands. May we breathe with intention because what we nurture Take a few minutes now for our time of prayer and meditation. And so we gather together in the great mystery, the spirit of life and love. We pray especially today for those who are ill, that they will find ways not to be lonely in the healing. We pray for all of those who are on the front lines of this crisis, the doctors, the nurses, all of our medical folks, that they will have strength and stamina. I offer these prayer requests that came in on Facebook. Mary 
only just knowing we are available is enough for now. Carol offers a joy that hearing her son Philip laugh with his friends. Lisa offers that she's looking forward to seeing what light this sheds on the environmental impacts. Hillary offers a joy that she's enjoying watching her dog who has so much joy in not being alone every day. Nancy is finding joy in feeling that the world has stopped and she is finally able to catch up. Spending time in her sewing room creating. Let's take a few moments now and offer any joys and concerns that we have in the chat box. You are welcome to type so that we can see those joys and concerns that are written there.
And so we gather all of the joys and concerns that have been listed and all of the joys and concerns that are on our hearts this morning. And we hold them all together in the heart of love. Blessed be and amen. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in when I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. We want to thank you so much for joining us for this time together this morning. Just a couple of announcements as we close our time together. We do have a program in place called Each One Reach One, where folks are calling each other. And if you would like to participate in making calls, you can let, us, let me know by emailing me or the church office or calling. Or if you would like to receive a phone call every few days, to help um, keep the isolation at bay, we would like you to get on that list as well. Or if you know someone who would like to be on that list or would be a good candidate for that, please let us know that as well. And we will continue to expand um, our Each One Reach One program. As I mentioned a little bit ago, Junto, our younger adult um, active group, has stepped up in a huge way wanting to help. They are looking to deliver groceries, run errands, deliver um, pharmaceuticals that need to be picked up, and they're also willing to offer tech tutorials on Zoom or whatever else you need to help stay connected during this time. And for the time being, you can contact me or the church office to connect with them, and then we'll put that um, information in our announcements going out later this week, and you can contact them directly. Please do share the links to our worship with others. It would be great to expand our reach during this time. And please do keep your financial support coming. We do need to continue to um, keep everything in place and pay our staff and all of our expenses. And we appreciate your generosity and all of the ways that you are supporting all of these efforts. There will be a recording available of this service that you can also um, watch or share with folks, and that information about that will be available later this week as well. Once again, thank you so much for being together in this way this morning. We've had uh, at various moments a little over 100 people here together, and I think that that is just miraculous that we can be together in this way. And so thank you so much for tuning in. We'll continue to make this available every Sunday morning, and we'll continue to learn as we go. And I wish you all good blessings. Namaste. Bill will lead us in our closing song. Comfort me. Comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me. Comfort me, comfort me.
beloved, as we de depart from this space together this morning, we will go our separate ways, but our connection remains intact. Let us hold that connection one with another, and may the light of our chalice continue to warm us in that connection until we meet again in this way. Blessings and namaste. Love to you all. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these pies.